Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a homemade functional equation. We have f of x plus y times f of x equals 2x plus 4xy and we're going to be solving for x values. First of all let me tell you that f is continuous and that's pretty much all we know about it. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I want to go ahead and replace x with 1. And when I do, I get f of 1 plus y times f of 1 equals 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 4 times 1 times y, which is 4y. So this is nice because we got y inside the parentheses and f of 1 is a constant. So let's go ahead and replace f of 1 with c. It doesn't matter what it is at this point, but we know c is a constant. So we get f of cy plus 1 equals 4y plus 2. Now, we have a linear expression inside the parentheses, linear expression outside the parentheses, or on the right-hand side. Does this mean f is linear? That's a good question, right? One of the things you can do is, though, you can replace y with something to turn this into something better. Like, what can I replace y with so that the whole thing becomes y? In other words, can I find f of y from here? And the answer is yes. If you replace y with y minus 1 over c, now think about it, you're going to go ahead and multiply this by c, and the c is going to cancel out. You're going to end up with y minus 1, and then when you add 1, the, the 1 and the negative 1 is going to cancel out. You're going to end up with y inside the parentheses. Make sense? How could you get that, though, if you didn't know it? You could kind of replace cy plus 1 with another variable like x. And in this case, since we're trying to get to y, let's go ahead and use a different color y, like a blue y. So my goal is to solve for the yellow y. So what I do is I first subtract 1 from both sides. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and subtract 1. And then finally, I divide by C, which is a constant, right? Divide by C and divide by C. And in this case, I get the Y in terms of the other Y. So I noticed that uh, just to make them look different, I made one of them a blue Y. Now you got yellow Y in terms of the blue Y. Make sense? Obviously, if this is confusing, you can use a different variable like a T or z, whatever, don't use x because x is a little different in this case, uh, but you can do that. Make sense? So I'm replacing y with y minus 1 over c on both sides. On the left, I'm getting f of y. On the right, 4 times y will be 4 times y minus 1 over c plus 2. Remember that this expression is replacing y. Make sense? Great. Let's go ahead and distribute to 4. This gives us f of y equals 4y minus 4 over c plus 2. And in this case, it's totally up to you. You can make a common denominator if you want, but that's not necessary. Let's go back to what c was. c is what? f of 1. Awesome. So we can go ahead and use that information. Since f of 1 is c and I have f of y, I can replace or why not replace y with 1, right? So let's replace y with 1. That gives us f of 1 equals 4 minus 4 divided by c plus 2. 4 minus 4 is 0, so this is going to become 0 as long as c does not equal 0. And remember that because c is f of 1, so f of 1 should not be 0. Make sense? That is our condition. But f of 1 equals 2, so we know it's not 0. So we don't even have to worry about it, right? But how does this help us, though, uh, knowing that f of 1 is equal to 2? Well, we just said f of 1 is equal to c, so c is equal to 2 or 2 is equal to c. Make sense? Awesome. What are we going to do with this information now? Well, this is super duper valuable. We're going to go ahead and plug it into our equation because we do have c here. Notice that we have a c here. We can go ahead and replace it with 2. Let's do it. Now, this gives us f of y equals 4y minus 4 divided by c, which is 2 plus 2. And then, from here, we can basically divide the top and the bottom by 2 by factoring. So, we get f of y equals 
2y minus 2 plus 2, and the minus 2 and the plus 2 cancel out, and we end up with f of y equals 2y, which indicates that f of x can also be written as 2x. Most of the time, we want our function to be written in terms of x, even though it wouldn't matter. It's the same thing. These are just dummy variables, okay? And by the way, when I make all these substitutions, don't worry about the value of x because it keeps changing. So you can pretty much use any variable you want. Make sense? Okay, so that's our function, but guess what? This is only the first method. So we still have to talk about the second method. Let's go ahead and take a look. You know why? Because the second method is just awesome. That's why it's the second method. All right, great, let's go ahead and take a look. But let's rewrite the original equation f of x plus y f of x. By the way, I said this is a homemade equation. The left-hand side I got, just got from a book, like I saw this, and then I thought of something for f of x and plugged it in and got the right-hand side. So it's kind of like maybe semi-homemade, but I guess we could call it homemade. Cool. Now, we have this equation and we want to solve this differently, and I really have a cool method for solving this. Don't get mad if... This method is just too awesome for you, okay? So I'm going to replace x with 0, and it just does miracles. Now, when you do replace x with 0, basically you're going to be getting f of 0 plus y f of 0, right? And on the right-hand side, x is 0, this is 0, this is 0. You're just going to get 0. Awesome. Now, we have to think about two things. If f of, f, f of 0 is 0, then f of 0 is going to be 0, so nothing new there. But suppose, or if, f of 0 does not equal 0. By the way, if f of 0 does not equal 0, it just means that f of anything is 0, so it's just going to be f of x equals 0, identically 0, will be a solution for this equation. So for all x, x values, this is going to be true. But if if f of 0 is equal to 0, then something interesting is going to happen. You know what that is? <laughs> okay. If f of 0 is equal to 0, then we basically get, because we're going to replace x with 0, right? So we can now replace y with 0, right? Let's go ahead and do it. f of x plus, so here we're replacing y with 0, f of x plus 0 times f of x, so 0 times f of x, and on the right-hand side, y is 0, so this is going to give you 2x. But notice that this is just 0, giving us f of x equals 2x. And again, in this case, you can verify that f of 0 is equal to 0. I hope you like the second method. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.